You pulled an all-nighter virtually. Yes, <laughs> we've been up all night. Uh, uh, the white smoke emerged uh, about what time? So uh, just a few moments ago. Uh, this is a process now that has been underway uh, in, in different ways now since last July. Uh, we moved into uh, more visible and formal negotiations in the Workplace Relations Commission there uh, from November onwards. Uh, and just in the last few minutes, uh, agreement uh, has been reached on proposals that I'll be recommending to government and I know the unions will be taking to their representative body later in the morning. Yeah, there are a total of 19 unions involved in all of this. Covering approximately 400,000 workers in all forms of our public service. The bones of the agreement, uh, people have probably been hearing it already this morning, it's uh, 10.25%, whereas the previous offer which was rejected by the unions, was 8.5%. It's paid over a two and a half year period. But it's this is a detail that I had only discovered now in your statement. It's made up of pay increases totaling 9.25%, but then 1% is available for local bargaining. Yes, indeed. So if I could just offer a quick perspective on the overall agreement itself. Uh, uh, public sector wage agreements that go over a number of years Uh, have been really important for helping us both recognise the value of the work our public servants do, but also be fair and affordable to taxpayers within our economy. And I strongly believe the agreement, which was hard negotiated by both sides, gets that balance right again. Just to answer your question of detail there, local bargaining refers to issues that uh, would be important to different sectors of our public service. So because our public service is so varied, Different issues will matter in different ways. Our teaching unions might prioritise a matter that would be very different to what our nursing unions would prioritise. And local bargaining just refers to leaving aside a, um, an amount of money during the wage agreement that can be used in different ways to deal with those issues. Yeah. And it's included in the overall figures. You also say that those on lowest incomes will receive up to 17.3% over the lifetime of the agreement, inclusive of that local bargaining provision. Uh, how would that work out? Like if someone gets 9.25% because there's no local provision, but let's say they do, they get 1025 Who gets 17.3%? Uh, the very lowest uh, levels of income within uh, our public service, and of which there are relatively speaking few because of the value that we place on our public servants. Uh, uh, will receive the biggest gains. And the reason for that is that some of the increases that will happen across the two years are expressed either as a percentage increase or as a cash payment. Or a cash payment is the wrong word. An overall fixed payment would be a better way of saying it. And if you have an overall fixed payment, that means that those who are on lower income will benefit more. OK, we've always said that uh, when you do percentage uh, deals, the people who've got more to begin with end up getting far more in every deal because, you know, 10% of 100 grand is 10 grand, 10% of 30 grand is only 3 grand. Which, so the gap in absolute terms gets wider. Uh, it doesn't actually because of the point you just made to me a moment ago. Uh, the reason why those who are on lower income uh, will benefit more from this agreement is because the feature of it is that there will be some fixed payments uh, for those Uh, who are on lower income. And because of that, those who are on lower income will gain more. Uh, Overall, the agreement is uh, worth more to those who are on low middle income within our public servants than those who are on higher Mm. income, Uh, reflecting the fact that, of course, those who are on lower income uh, are more affected by what is happening with prices going up. But there is that fundamental mathematical thing, and I I, I use 30 grand, say, and 100 grand as an example. If you're on 30 grand, you get 10%. You're now on 33 uh, if you're on 100 ground, you get 10%, you're now on 110. So the difference, which was 70, between the lowest and the highest, now becomes 77. So uh, th- that's why the gap widens with percentages, which I always believe is a kind of a flawed arrangement. But then we also have to bear in mind that those who are on higher incomes within our public servants, public services uh, would be doing work that is really important to our society and to our economy. If you look at a hospital consultant and the work that they do, If you would look at uh, those, for example, who uh, work in um, engineering, who would work in planning, uh, who would be in doing and providing public services for which there's a lot of demand for the work that they do within the private sector. Uh, We as an employer uh, not only need to be 
fair to the taxpayer, also need to recognise the work our public servants do. But for many parts of our public services as well, they need to be competitive against the private sector alternative. Now, looking at at the end of this deal, after four years, when the maximum is being paid, in addition to what you had offered, the 8.5%, this represents an increase of about 450 million, there or thereabouts. I mean, is that affordable? Looking down, um, we can't predict the future, but an extra 450 million on top of the existing offer is a fairly substantial whack. It is, uh, but it is going to be spread over four different budget years. And I did say at the very be at different stages in this process uh, that uh, I was willing to negotiate. And I did accept once you go into the Workplace Relations Commission, you do, of course, need to make changes in your proposal. Uh, But if I look at where I was hoping to get this agreement to and where we are at the moment, I do believe it is. and, And I'm certain that it is affordable for the taxpayer and that we can deliver against this agreement while making progress on other Mm. priorities that our country wants us to deliver. Now, already we've heard Annette Cunningham of the AGSI saying, you know, there was no real understanding of Garthi's difficulties uh, when we got face-to-face in the talks. They didn't seem to know, they didn't seem to understand what our difficulties are. We understand only too well, uh, but this is a negotiation. And we are trying to come up with an agreement that works for 400,000 public servants. And uh, uh, you were asking me questions earlier on about the affordability of it. Uh, And ultimately, a compromise is reached. And when a compromise is reached, it's still the case uh, that not everybody uh, will feel uh, that the compromise that has been reached is what they were hoping for. Um, But I still believe and hope coming out of the process this morning, uh, the case will be made not only by me, but by others regarding why this is a fair and an affordable outcome and recognises all the work that's been done Mm -hmm. in our public services. And of course, the very reason we have a local bargaining element, which you raised questions with with me earlier on, is then to handle issues that are Mm -hmm. specific to different parts of our public service. 